Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Kimberly Boschman, and this is the Intentionally Intuitive Podcast. In this episode, we're going to unpack the monumental and potentially life-altering energies of the upcoming partial solar eclipse new moon illumination that's occurring on October 25th, 2022. So I wanted to get this resource out uh, to you all well in advance, because as I mentioned in the previous full moon forecast, I do believe that the full moon on the 9th is really sort of setting the stage for the upcoming eclipse and the energies will sort of be working in tandem. And they will both, (laughs) both illuminations will potentially be very potent and concentrated for many of us. So I wanted you to have the forecast as well in advance, you know, ahead of time. So if you see the energy starting to present for you, you can hopefully better understand the sort of why they might be showing up that way and how to best work with it. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so this will be this uh, this podcast will be an overview of this illumination for all life path numbers, i.e., the collective. So we can and probably will see these energies play out globally as well as individually. But to better understand how this eclipse may affect your life path number more specifically, be sure to listen to your October forecast, which is now up on my uh, YouTube channel and my, um, my podcast. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Uh, and this, of course, is a general forecast, a general reading. So for the most specific, accurate forecast for you personally, a personal reading is always recommended. So you can book some time with me. My information is in the description box below. So the theme that I'm sort of tying to this eclipse is honest self-confrontation and radical honesty. <laughs> So whatever we have been avoiding or purposely overlooking or explaining a way to keep from sort of taking the reins within our own lives to move sort of more freely on the path of our own truth and authenticity, those areas potentially will have the spotlight of this illumination on them and will eventually need to be eclipsed out. So in astrology, um, This eclipse is occurring in the sign of Scorpio, which is co-ruled by Pluto, death, transformation, rebirth, and Mars, ambition, drive, primal desires, instincts, action, confidence, and so on. In numerology, this eclipse is bringing the seven energy, truth, higher consciousness, self-awareness, and understanding, and a lot of five energy. So change, transformation, expansiveness, freedom, independence, autonomy, exploration, and so on. So there's just really no getting around this. Uh, There is a strong potential for massive transformations and awakenings under these energies. It's just set up that way. Much of the focus will sort of be highlighting where we need to be very honest with ourselves and make decisions and take action from that place of honesty, from that place of honest self-realization. This is open season for this realization to occur in any area of our lives uh, where we continue to mask a side of ourselves or accept things that go against what we need in this lifetime in order to thrive. So everything's on the table, money, resources, relationships, career, desires, boundaries, you name it, it will probably be at the party for review. None of this is punishment. I want to make that very, very clear, right? Like the energies don't work against us. If they, they only work for us, they're, they're, I mean, they're really sort of neutral, right? It's sort of how they come in for us and what we choose to do with them and all of that, that truly makes the difference. The energies are just present. I mean, sometimes obviously there's like divine intervention where things come in and like there's a tower moment and things happen, right? And that's very, very possible under this energy because we have a lot of transformative energy at play here. But my point is, even with those divine interventions, we can still make choices to, you know, and how we want to work with the energy, like what changes, what modifications, how we want to implement these changes, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like ultimately it comes back to us 
and how we want to maneuver through and work with these energies. Uh, But none of this is punishment. So it's assistance from the unseen to assist us in living our best, most authentic and, you know, most authentic life and to be able to get the most out of our own unique experiences of life, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, all of that stuff. Like, again, to the soul, all of the experiences are sort of neutral. To the ego, (laughs) there's extremes, right? But to the soul, it's like everything is an experience. And, you know, that's where the growth comes in. That's where the you know, it's through change that we get the next experience, that we get that that transformation, that we get to move to the next level of this journey, right? So again, none of this is punitive. It's all working for us and with us. So I think that's really important to remember, especially when we're in the thick of it and we're moving through these changes and it can feel uh, very much like punish- <laughs> punishment sometimes, right? Um, so yeah, so just kind of keep that in mind. So with this eclipse, we are working with 25-7 energy, 14-5 energy, and 41-5 energies, most predominantly. Those are the ones that really stand out the most. So again, when this uh, much five energy is present, we know that change and transformation is pretty much guaranteed for some area of our life. Uh, Five energy is very fast moving energy. It's very big energy. It wants to come in and sort of sweep us and move us to where we need to be so that we can be getting the most out of this experience. Five energy wants to experience life to the fullest with all of its senses. And so again, anywhere in life where things become mundane or um, pushed to the side and need to be in the spotlight, the five energy is going to, to really make that happen. So it's really hard to ignore five energy. Uh, Let's see. So the energy of the 25-7 specifically, because we have that seven energy, uh, but we have the influencing energy of the 25, that often indicates some level of trials, tribulations, tests, or life lessons that sort of force us in a way, and we always have free will and all that, but they sort of like the experience or um, the decisions that come up, whatever, right? The, the, The obstacle, the challenges sort of force us to really go within and to pull from our own inner wisdom, our inner knowing, and our own unique energy reserves. The external can assist, right? And we can use the external as a resource, but the external will not be able to fully provide what is needed to maneuver through this experience. This is a cycle where success can be ours after we get to the other side, but it won't necessarily be handed to us. So it comes after the self-reflection and the self-realizations and after we make the effort to put all of that energy into motion in a way that feels most aligned for ourselves, which can require a lot of dedicated work and perseverance. So this 25-7 energy is depicted by the Knight of Wands in tarot. And so if we think about that for a moment, there's a lot of passion and desire behind the action. And if you think about that, you know, desire and passion, when it comes to desire and passion, that is about as authentic as it gets. You can't fake desire. You can't fake the fire within. You just cannot. (laughs) So when you feel it, when you truly feel it, when you feel passionate about something, when you feel that desire for something, you know, you feel it, right? It, It is coming from your internal fire, right? So when you feel it, you feel it. When you don't, you don't. When that fire is lit from within, we need to tend to it and explore where it's trying to take us because there is an experience that's waiting for us, um, you know, and one that is aligned with our own personal life journey. Because if it wasn't aligned, we would not feel the passion for it. We would not feel that that excitement and all of that. Now, yes, we can take that to extremes, right? But I'm not going to go into that. The point is, if you feel the passion, if you feel that desire, there's something to it, right? And it's unique for you. It belongs to you because you are feeling it. So that's what I mean. We can't fake that. When we feel it, we feel it. When we don't, we don't. So it's up to us, of course, 
to follow this fiery energy, but it's also up to us to learn how to handle it without extinguishing it. And a lot of times we have that fire, but then things in the external happen or we try to um, mimic you know, others from the external or be like them or not be like ourselves, whatever, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. And we extinguish that inner flame. And so this energy is like that Knight of Wands, which is like, and that Mars energy that I talked about, that's really igniting that or putting, uh, a, yeah, putting the, the torch to the gasoline type thing. And so pay attention to where that ignites for you. It's trying to show you something. So now moving into the 14.5 energy, this energy is also encouraging self-reflection and to sort of review past and current behaviors and mindsets to make modifications wherever it is that we want to see more aligned results. So this energy can feel like sort of the brakes are being put on a little bit when it comes to forward momentum until we take the work seriously and do something with it. So there's no sort of passing the buck here with this 14.5 energy. We will be required to, again, take responsibility in some way for the direction of our life and accountability for how our actions, present and past, sort of influence our own experience directly, right? So again, there's no passing the buck. There's no blaming other people for where we are at. There may have been influences from the outside, but ultimately it's our own decisions and our own choices that directly influence our own experience, right? Now, keep in mind that under this energy, competitive situations could occur now, um, just, you know, across the board with family, with friends, with colleagues, whatever. But there's like this, this air of competitiveness that's sort of floating around with this energy. So just keep that in mind. Choose wisely in how you want to participate in those experiences. Because with any competition, we are ultimately comparing ourselves to another, and those comparisons can not only create a divide between self and others, but it can pull us further away from our own authenticity when we feel we need to be more like someone else in order to succeed. Now, healthy competitions are fun and great. And by all means, if it's light and jovial and fun, go for it. But stay aware of your mindset while competing and afterwards. So whether you win or lose, what is your mindset like? What are you thinking? What are you feeling? What are you what do you want to modify so that you get different results in the future? And is that healthy? Does that feel healthy for you? Or are you doing it so that you can be more like that other person or that you, so that you can feel successful in comparison to that other person or those other people? So again, the mindsets, the beliefs are all kind of coming into focus now um, through the experiences. The 14.5 energy reminds us that we are primary, like we are the primary manipulator of our own life force energy. And I'm going to repeat that. We are the primary manipulator of our own life force energy. So we need to take that responsibility for that gift and, t and decide what we want to create with it, because that's a lot of power. That's a lot of life force energy. So great wisdom and understanding can result from this 14, five cycle and the eclipse sort of is jump starting. It's, it's a jump, like a jumping off point, right? The eclipse is the jumping off point that we'll be sort of needing to start this work, right? To sort of see where it is that these modifications or these changes or these mindsets or whatever need to be uh, implemented, right? And, and adjusted. And I would say, again, this is just the jumping off point because we'll probably be working with these energies or seeing influences of these energies for at least the next six months um, as the storyline sort of continues to uh, unfold. Now, there is some really incredibly beautiful energy that's coming through with this illumination, with this, this eclipse as well. This sort of softens the experience a little and introduces opportunities for change, but change around like love and abundance and fertility. Um, and not necessarily like, you know, like, getting pregnant and having a child, that form of creation, but fertility for like these new experiences that we can, you know, like, uh, birth something new, uh, from the unseen into the scene. 
So this is incredibly beautiful energy. I mean, it's all incredibly beautiful, but some of those other energies are a little bit more intense and, and really do, you know, they really do call for that deep, deep, you know, introspection and, you know, <laughs> taking responsibility and all that. They're a little bit more, um, intense, <laughs> but this, this, uh, this other energy that's sort of that is also influencing this this, uh, this this eclipse again sort of softens the experience a little. So we again we could see we could see change around love, abundance, fertility, which is incredibly beautiful. It's very like Venusian almost. Um, this energy of the forty one five opens the door for new and elevated experiences to occur that have the potential to bring in much joy and contentment as well as newfound confidence so again while we're doing all this like inner work and like um, making all these modifications or changes or building a stronger foundation in our own lives and you know the direction that we want to move in and all that we have this beautiful 45 or sorry 41 5 energy that's that's also present that's giving us the confidence to do that right and so this energy sort of encourages us to enjoy the beauty and the pleasure that's surrounding us and to really find ways to feel good about ourselves as a person so it is also possible that others will sort of add to that adoration because you know i don't care what anybody says we are human. We have egos and <laughs> those egos are a part of who we are and they're not going anywhere. Uh, and so those egos sometimes need to be fed to help to build the confidence, right? Like we can self-talk and self-promote ourselves and, and build ourselves up as much as we want and we can feel whole and secure in ourselves. But there is something to be said about that external validation. We don't need it, but shit, it feels good, right? It, it like helps us to see that we're on the right path. And there is actually some uh, some signs in, in astrology and some numbers in numerology where that actually does, that, that outside validation, that, that outside um, adoration, right? Like confirmation really does help the individual to step into their life path or step into their sign in astrology or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So as much as we want to be like, we don't need the external validation, we don't need blah, 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 blah. We don't need it, but it certainly doesn't hurt. You know what I'm saying? And so this energy sort of opens the door for that, you know, where it's kind of like people might notice something about you or, or like I like to say, like give you flowers while you're alive, right? So it's kind of like, you know, someone might just give you a compliment or, you know, compliment your work or your contribution or whatever, or they might tell you how much of an impact you've had for them, um, in their own journey or whatever, you see what I'm saying? And so this energy really opens the door for that. So again, it sort of softens everything. It, it sort of gives the boost that we might need to find that confidence. Um, so this energy sort of, again, just encourages us to enjoy the beauty and the pleasure that surrounds us and really find ways to just celebrate ourselves and to see how far we've come and to acknowledge the, the parts that are working, right? Because there's so much emphasis. I mean, there's going to be a lot of emphasis probably with this eclipse on what's not working, but we really need to make sure that we have a healthy balance there. And we're also focusing on what is working? What do we want to keep building on? What do we want to expand upon? What do we, what makes us feel good? What, you know what I'm saying? What doesn't need to be modified, but rather, uh, or modified in a way where again, we're expanding upon it because we did such a great job with it. You see what I'm saying? So there's, there's a, there's a couple sides to this eclipse that we just need to be aware of and not neglect, right? There's, there's a big part of this to make sure that you are paying attention to the things that, you feel you are doing right, that you feel you are contributing contributing in a way that feels aligned and feels good and that you want to comp continue to build on and all of those things. So this 45-1 energy is going to assist us um, in doing that. Uh, let's see, what else do I want to say about this? Anything? Uh, so yeah, so this is an energetic cycle uh, where conditions are going to be changing because again, it is five energy. It's 41, but it is five energy. Um, so, but it's like a, 
it's like, again, that sort of softer change, the, the, the more welcome change, I guess, the one that we're more, we're more likely to, to be excited about. You know what I'm saying? Um, the other changes, of course, will bring great things, but they can be a little bit more challenging while you're in the midst of them. This energy, yeah, there will be changes and stuff, but it's that, that sort of those fun changes where it's like new opportunities could come in. Uh, you might meet new people or, you know, build upon your soul group that comes in for you. Again, meet people with similar values and people who um, acknowledge you and appreciate you. And then you do that in turn for them. You know what I'm saying? So these are those these new opportunities coming in or new opportunities with career or uh, in purpose just across the board, right? Or with finances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So again, new opportunities with people, places or things could come in at this time. People might change location and changing that location may just open up the floodgates for all new experiences to come in that are just beautiful and make you feel really, really good, right? Like it, initially it might be a little, a little bit challenging, right? Because with any change, there's cha- like inevitable changes or I'm sorry, um, challenges, but the ones under this 41.5 energy can just feel really, really good. Um, so yeah, and through those changes, right? Like through those, well, through those new opportunities with those new people, with those new places, with those new things, or building upon people and places and things that are already present, but new opportunities come in around those areas, those can ultimately alter habits and situations, right? So there is ultimately some kind of change that comes in through this process. The other thing with the 41.5 I want to mention is that creative forces are at play under this energy. So that is going to produce not only like material goods, but long lasting, loving relationships are possible uh, with this energy. So this is an energy where you could suddenly meet the love of your life or existing ties may be deepened at this time. That's what I mean. Like you might, and it doesn't have to be like romantic love of your life. It could be you meet a just a a friend who just feels like you've been friends across lifetimes and there's just a connection there. And so you want to build on that and, uh, which can bring a lot of beauty into your life. And so those, all of those things are very, very possible under this energy. Like I said, it sort of reminds me of like Venusian energy, like Venus, um, on steroids a little bit. So, um, So yeah, so just pay attention to who you meet at this time, who comes in, what like insights you get, what downloads, uh, because I think all of those are going to be really, really important to sort of lead you um, towards your next big thing, right? Your next step. Uh, And the beauty of this 41.5 cycle is that when we use the vibration of this energy wisely, uh, the changes that are brought about can bring our wildest dreams into fruition. But again, it's our responsibility to steer our own ship in the direction that feels the most aligned for us. So I, I'm glad to see this 41.5 energy. Um, like I said, ultimately, it is tied in with a five. So there is going to be change associated with that. It's not like, again, it's not necessarily like things just falling into our lap. There's definitely like opportunities present we make a decision through that decision. We see some kind of change or modification, which can create a different experience, meet different people, whatever you see what I'm saying. So we are a key player in all of this, uh, individually, but I like the 41 five energy. Cause like I said, it just sort of softens the intensity a little bit of what, you know, all the other things that we have going on <laughs> with this, with this eclipse. So big, big energies, my loves, um, yeah, they're, but they're coming in this strongly for a reason, right? So let's be open to them and sort of open to the changes that come in and see where this ever-changing tide decides to take us now. So just roll with it, baby. Just roll with it. All right, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. Take care, everyone. I hope it's a beautiful eclipse for you all. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now.